2018 Global Peace Leadership um, Conference will be taking place between 1st of August to the 2nd of August in Kampala, Uganda. The team behind this is well represented and I have Daniel Juma Omondi. He is the Executive Director for Global Peace Fund. Kenya, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for your time. But explain to us, for Kenyans, set the basis for us, what, does, what is the 2018 Global Peace and Leadership Conference all about? Thank you, Zinzi. Um, you remember in 2010, we, Kenya hosted the Global Peace Convention. Um, my organization uh, was instrumental uh, in doing that, and um, it was hosted by President Kibaki. Uh, now, this time, Pre uh, President Museveni uh, has decided to host the Global Peace Leadership Conference uh, in Kampala on the 1st and 2nd mm -hmm. of August. And uh, it's a regional convening, you know, bringing regional leaders to discuss, you know, new models, sustainable models for peace and development. Mm -hmm. And the theme, you know, for this conference is going to be moral and innovative leadership, you know. And uh, we want to look at the models. For example, in the region, we have very many issues that have been going on. Look at the South Sudan issue. Look at the handshake in Kenya, for example. Mm. These are best practices. So we hope that this conference can actually highlight some of the models that we already have, you know, so that leaders can actually, you know, get involved in solving the, the problems of Africa. So we are happy that President Museveni, you know, is actually taking a lead, and the ESC is going to be joined by regional presidents. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, know, you know, we are able to showcase that this region is, is good for business. Right. It's a peaceful region. It's a peaceful region, yes. as the East African community. Yes. And I've heard you saying quite a number when it comes to the new models of sustainable peace and development. What are those new models? Is it something that probably we've never heard about? Are they new? Yeah, no, no, I mean, I, I don't want to say that it's new, but um, let me give you an example. Right. For example, the cross-border initiative. You know, you know, a few months ago, we saw President Kenyatta, you know, with the president, Prime Minister of Ethiopia, you know, side, signing some kind of uh, cross-border initiative mm -hmm. in Moyale, mm -hmm. you know, because as you know, Africa is basically, you know, was, you know, divided by, by the colonialists. Right. Huh? And uh, if you look at, for example, the border between Kenya and Ethiopia, the people there, so on the Kenyan side and on the Ethiopians, they are basically one people. But there has been conflicts. Now, if you look at, for example, Kenya and Uganda, the Pokot, the Karamoja, these are issues. You know, they have had conflicts. Huh? So we are looking at, um, for example, we're going to be highlighting the cross-border initiative as one of the ways, whatever happened in the Moyale, we hope that President Kenyatta and President Museveni can also sign something, you know, so that uh, we can be able to solve once and for all the Karamoja issue. Mm -hmm. the, for example, the Migingo issue, these are issues mm -hmm. that can be solved. Mm -hmm. But leaders must sit down and talk and agree that we are one people, mm -hmm. we are one region. You know, Daniel, yeah. when you speak of, when we speak of global peace leadership in conference, part yeah. of the number of organizations that comes to one's mind are the likes of Comesa, UN, EGAD, who is one of your partners, yeah. and Comesa. But what would be the role of the private sector in pushing and encouraging for global peace and leadership within a region, not just in Kenya, but within the East Africa? What role does the private sector play? Uh, since we are partnering with the private sector foundation in Uganda mm -hmm. for this. It's one of the co-conveners. IGAD, you know, has been one of our main, uh, you know, funders. And um, the private sector has a responsibility. I can tell you, for example, in Kenya, the biggest problem the, our theory of change has been that uh, we have a big bulge of people, of young people who get out of the education system mm. and they go out into a job market that's already full. Mm. So we have youth that basically are unemployed. So when you have youth that are not employed, you know, they are available for misuse. They are available for recruitment into violence, into extremism. So the private sector has a responsibility to ensure that we create jobs, we create livelihoods, we get our youth into jobs so that they're not available for misuse. You know, the reason we have population violence in Kenya every five years is basically because of this. So if we can be able, government can collaborate with the private sector, get our youth busy, get them into jobs, then we're going to have a peaceful region. Do you think the private sector is doing enough? Yeah, they're trying. I can, I can tell you for free. It is the private sector that is creating, you know, the biggest amount of jobs in the region. Government can only create so much, but the private sector, if government can work with the private sector, they are able 
to actually you know, expand the business. They're able to do business across the border, across the region, and we can get our youth employed. All right, Daniel, yes. the other thing is that when you think within the East Africa community, the Somali war that is currently yes. ongoing, the terror attacks, yes. um, you had mentioned also the issue of Megigo Island, the dispute between Kenya yes. and Uganda, who are now even hosting this conference. Yes. Um, but my key question would be, does Kenya and East Africa as a region, as a community, have proper framework and policies to make sure that global peace and leadership can be uh, can be seen in this day and age does it have proper framework yes, to push for that kenya is at a very very good stage kenya has been leading for example in the south sudan mm -hmm. uh, you, you know mediation you know you could see president kenyatta you could see railo dinga after the handshake and uh, Museveni also got involved mm -hmm. now look at the handshake for example this is one best practice that we can export we can show, I mean, especially after it happened in Kenya, you know, Salva Kiir and Rick Machar had a handshake. And then you could see the President Abiy of Ethiopia mm -hmm. and Eritrea had a handshake. And we could see, you know, President um, Trump and Kim Jong-un had a handshake. Mm -hmm. So Kenya is the place, I mean, we are able to export these best practices. And I, I'm, I'm very sure we have a big delegation, almost 100 from Kenya attending this conference. Um, we can be able to actually you know, work together with the region and mm. export these be best practices and right. see how we are able to, to move the region forward. Right. Daniel, yes. thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. And all the best. Thank you so much. All right, that is yes. Daniel Jumamondi, the Executive Director for the Global Peace Foundation here in Kenya. We'll be keeping an